Let's take a look at what's the integral of sine x times cosine x. This is an interesting question because if you want to use the u substitution, we have two choices for u, namely the first choice for sine x, the second choice for cosine x. And then guess what? Both of them will work. So let me show you the first one. So the first case, I'm going to let u equals to sine x. All right? And then by doing that, I will get du is equal to cosine x dx, and isolating the dx, we'll get du over cosine x. So then I'm going to change this integral right, in terms of u. So this will be uh, the sine x, it's what we said to be u. So let me put it here, let me put it here. And then uh, the cosine x stays the same for now. But then the dx is what we said, it's going to be du over cosine x. And let me put that down right here. So this is du over cosine x. And as usual, you see that the things that's in terms of x cancel each other out. So um, now the answer is right here. It's going to be integral of u du. And of course, we'll have to find the antiderivative of this. This will be just 1 half u squared. And uh, I'll write this back in terms of the x. So this will be 1 over 2. Um, sine square x plus c. So this is the first answer. And now, if I take this uh, from a different approach, if I let u equals to cosine x, and let's see if this will work as well. du will be negative sine x dx, and dx will be du over negative sine x. And if I take this integral to the u world, in this case, I will get the integral. Sine x stays the same for this case. And then the cosine x right here, cosine x, it's what we said to be u in this case. So we have the sine x times u. And then the dx, it's found to be du over negative sine x. du over negative sine x, like this. And now we see that this sine x and that sine x cancel each other out. And then we can proceed. This will be, we do have a negative sign right here. So let me put the negative sign in the front. Negative integral u du. And this will be just negative. The integral of this is going to be 1 half u squared, right? And finally, I can plug in cosine x into the u right here. So this is going to be negative one half cosine square x plus c. And as you can see that, this will also work out nicely. And then if you differentiate this, you'll get that. If you differentiate this, you also get that. And now you will be wondering like, which one's the actual correct answer? Both of these are correct. And you, will be, you may be wondering, how can they look different? In fact, they are secretly off by just a constant. So this is why. From the first approach, you get this, 1 half sine square x plus c, let me put this as c1. And from the second approach, you will get negative 1 half cosine square x plus c2, right? And I'm going to claim that they are off by a constant, and what that means is they are technically the same, same kind of function, but then they are just off by a number. So um, let me put this together. Is it the same? Is it true that one half sine square x plus c? Uh, let me just call this c one. Is this the same as that? Negative one half cosine square x plus c two. Well, let's do some change with this. Let me put this to the other side, right? So let me put the one. Let me put a negative one half cosine x onto the other side. So I will get 1 half sine square x plus 1 half cosine square x, all right? And then let me put this c1 onto the other side. So this will be, I don't know if they are the same or not, c2 minus c1. And notice that right here, this is a function, and on the right-hand side, it's just a constant. So what does this mean? Well. 
This side, they both have the one half. Let me factor out the one half then. And then I will get sine square x plus cosine square x. And how can this be c1? How can this be c2 minus c1? And the key right here is you see the sine square x plus cosine square x. This right here is just equal to 1, right? By one of the trig identity. So on the left hand side, you have 1 half times 1. And that's equal to, well, this is a number. And this constant 1 half, it's exactly the result of c2 minus c1. And this is what it means by these two expressions are actually the same, but they are just off by a constant. So you will see that the function part, they look totally different. This is one of the reasons why that you always need to remember to put the plus c, because this c matters. So the function part, they look totally different, but with the plus c, then technically these two expressions, they will balance out, because once again, they will be just off by a constant because of this. So that's a story. And on the test, if you put uh, one or the other, that will be correct. And that's it.